as Nigeria tries to stop the coronavirus from spreading. Serap is asking the president to monitor spending and guard against possible corruptive practices. And the first lady of Nigeria has asked the country to put, be put under lockdown. Is it time for that option to be explored? This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. Now, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has sent an open letter to President Muhammad Buhari urging him to instruct the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, and the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission, ICPC, to monitor spending by federal agencies and state governors to combat the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria, saying this would remove the risk of corruption and mismanagement in the healthcare system. With me in the studio to have a conversation on this is legal practitioner Evans Ufeli. Pleasure to have your company. Thank you. We will be joined later by um, an economist, Bolaho Olujede, that will be um, via phone. Uh, let me start. Seraph is asking that the uh, President, Muhammad Bukhari, and his team should uh, bring up um, a monitoring of the spending uh, so far. Uh, do you think maybe this is an aspect that might be neglected in, in the face of the fact that this is a pandemic and is it a good call? Yes, I think uh, Serap has been proactive uh, because uh, we have a history of um, uh, deep corruption in times of crisis. Remember the Boko Haram, when Boko Haram was hitting hard on the government, I mean, the PDP government then. You remember that the reason Dasuki went to prison together with uh, one of the PDP chieftains was basically because of the funds that were meant for arms that were channeled to other areas. And I mean, we have a history of that. We have precedent of uh, mismanaging funds when there is crisis at hand. So what Serap is doing, because our government are not proactive and its institutions are not proactive, so a civil society organization is stepping into the shoes to remind government, to remind those institutions of government to make sure that they monitor how these funds, because, because there is a tension now, wherever there's an outbreak, we throw money to it. We push phone here and there because we want to eliminate, you know, this crisis. It's an existential crisis. It has a tendency and capacity to wipe out an entire country. So in order for us to monitor the funds, in order for us not to lose sight of the bad eggs among us who want to take advantage of this season, to divert funds to other uses. Yeah, but, but considering the to... fact that this is an unknown territory, it's, yeah. some, it's unlike anything we've had before in this country. And you don't, I mean, do you think that that will be uh, a priority, something that energy will be expended um, to do at this time? No, it is because, I mean, the institution that has been called upon are institutions whose function naturally is to look at corruption and corrupt tendencies. You say it's a situation that is an unknown territory. When Boko Haram started, it has never happened before it started. It was also an unknown territory. And we also developed and instituted a precedent where we began to divert funds for some persons. So I think it's been proactive. I mean, the, the, the setup is doing the right thing. Why we are being clouded with the overwhelming forces of this disease and its proclivities, we must also look at the prognosis or the tendencies of people who will want to take advantage of it to dwindle the nation of its hard income. All right, I'm told we have uh, economist uh, Bola Olojede on the line. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, good evening. Good evening to you. Uh, uh, quickly, the cases, as we know them, has risen to 40, and the president is yet to speak. So is it futile for Serap to be asking uh, Mr. President to present a COVID-19 budget and spending plan to the National Assembly, as well as set up a COVID trust fund to effectively respond to the crisis and support those most affected by it? Uh, well, it's a... It's a desirable thing to do at this time. Um, I, I believe the committee that was meant to review the budget 
will have completed their job and probably submit a report. Um, and then we can we can pass the, we can pass the budget. But the, 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 then the, the stimulus as well. Uh, I know CBN has been talking about a few things, and uh, the one about the, um, the the dropping of the pump price of fuel has already been executed. Though I know it would take a bit of a time for the private sector to truly catch on with the twenty nine dollar drop in, in price. Uh, it, it's ongoing, but we, we we actually have a bigger problem on our hands than just the adjustment of the of the budget. Uh, for example, the uh, committee has talked about uh, thirty naira. I mean, thirty dollars per barrel. Already, oil is well below thirty naira, so about twenty five dollars. So, um, is it, what we have in our in our uh, right now is the perpetually changing goalposts. So we have to be on our toes to play catch up until this corona thing plays toe and then we can see a little bit and then have more concrete policy. All right, well, we'll have more questions on uh, the Serap call, but there was something that happened earlier today, the press conference by uh, the CBN. Um, our business correspondent had a conversation with um, um, the CEO of Economic Associates, that's Ayo uh, Teriva. Uh, we'll, we'll watch okay. that, and then we'll come back and continue this conversation. Okay. Okay, I think uh, we have a challenge with that. We'll get to it in a bit. But let's, let's uh, continue with another call uh, by the same Serap um, asking for the EFCC and the ICPC to ensure the prosecution of anyone found uh, to have stolen public funds meant for addressing the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, this uh, can only work if there are already checks and balances. The question is, do we have those? Yes, I mean, it is the responsibility of uh, the EFCC and the ICPC to make sure that whoever is giving funds for these purposes is accountable to the system. You see, what Serap is doing is critical because, like I said before, we have a history, we have a tendency to take advantage of situation. And this is a situation that requires a lot of care and funds, okay? So um, the government must do all it can in as much as it want to wipe out the pandemic, the virus, it must also make sure that whoever is caught in the line trying to circumvent the funds meant for this purpose must be dealt with. And the institutions are being called to do so because the institutions should not go to bed just because um, we have uh, a disease that is uh, you know, very dangerous. They should also be on their tool, their primary assignment. They should be able to investigate how these funds are being moved to whom, when, and how, and the purpose for which they are being used, so as to ensure that at the end of the day, the purpose for which these funds are meant for is actually achieved, and we have these funds directed to the spot they are expected to be. If we do not have that, and we just rely on the overwhelming fact that we have a pandemic, and that is the only thing we should be talking about, I mean, a lot of things will go wrong along the line, because corruption is also a pandemic. Okay, economic pandemic, our economy is already struggling before this. And part of our economy is struggling was because of corruption before even this virus itself. So we should look at the problem as a wholesome uh, issue that should be addressed frontally. Okay, uh, I want to ask you, were you able to watch the press conference by the CBN governor earlier today? Um, well, the, the CBN governor obviously uh, is facing a bit of a challenge. And just that is because of one comment I made earlier about the fact that what we did in the okay, uh, We can barely hear you. Uh, we can barely hear you. The line is breaking. Uh, could you start again? Okay. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, it's, it's better now. Go ahead. Okay. I said the CBN is facing the challenge of removing those. Um, Golaho, we'll have to call you back. The line is really bad. We'll call you back in a bit. Oh, okay. All right. Um, uh, same question. Um, what's your impression of? I mean, you've seen, I was watching this morning a press briefing um, 
from the government to the people, live broadcast questions, a breakdown of everything that's being done in South Africa. Yes, arguably they have um, a bigger situation. They have more than 500 people already oh. infected. Um, if you bring, if you just oppose that to the press conference that we had today, we do know that they've rolled out some palliatives earlier. Um, about six uh, levels of that funds have been released to the NCDC and all of that. But how would you access? I mean, assess rather what the CBN has done so far in trying to manage the economy in these trying times. Well, I think the CBN has um, taken a very proactive measure because uh, as of yesterday and two days ago, the CBN had already um, uh, given a press statement outlining how uh, they are going to help to you know, cushion the effect of this virus on businesses and then in terms of uh, funds, fiscal and monetary policy to ensure that uh, the uh, disease does not affect or hit the economy in such a way that it will grossly affect, you know, the, the citizens of Nigeria. And then the question of the NCDC, okay, the position and all that. But what, what, I, what I want to look at now is that the, the organization itself, okay, have just one toll-free line. Now that one toll-free line, they said, according to them, it has other sub lines that cause are feed into. But from my experience, from the persons who have tried to call those lines, it's always very difficult to get through. And if you have a situation of over 200 million or the estimation of 200 million persons in a country, and you have just one phone number, which you claim have other sub numbers for emergency purposes, I mean, uh, issues like um, telecommunication and access to the institution that have the primary responsibility to do the testing and the screening of suspected cases. I think we have not done well in the line of access to that institution. Because if you have just one line, I mean, it's difficult to, to wrap your head around it. There are a lot of cases, suspected cases here and there, and people are trying to reach out, okay? Lagos State Government is doing so well because at the Lagos State Government have about five lines, uh, uh, phone numbers you can call in. But at the federal level, okay, where you have the, the real facility for this testing, we have just five uh, major places where you can have this testing done. But, I mean, access to that institution is what I'm looking at, that we should improve on that, okay? And then the issue of the, the um, treatment, because we are being given detailed account of a number of persons who have been tested positive, but we don't really have detailed account of the level of treatment and how it's they are responding. It's been given. Okay, if, if that is in the news, fine. I, I've, I've looked out for that. No, no, I'm saying so, that, I'm concurring with what you're saying, actually, yeah. that this information seems yeah. to be remitted. Okay, okay. So, so, I mean, those areas we should know. Uh, we just have, from the record, we have one death, okay, and then we have like 44 cases now, as of this evening. So we should also know, you know, how much treatment is being, being given. given. I mean, what is Details the... Details of this. All right, yes, let's, let's, and, uh, let's take uh, a look at that interview uh, done by a business correspondent earlier in reaction to the press briefing and basically what the CBN has been doing to help with the economic situation uh, that we find ourselves now. Those meetings, those FPC meetings, there is no point holding them if the fundamentals are not right. Uh, for the MPC meeting to be potent, uh, for them to have the autonomy to use their instrument, uh, one fundamental that must be in place, uh, one macroeconomic fundamental or policy fundamental, is that there must be external reserve adequacy to meet short-term trade and capital flow obligations. When you don't have that, uh, the risk is if you ease monetary policy as you currently need to, that ease is going to spill over into excess demand in the foreign exchange market. And since we don't have adequate reserves to cover the increase in demand, 
then you can't ease. So the only time that you can ease is when you have reserve levels that are high enough that even if you ease, you can meet demand. So if you can't meet demand, you can ease. Unfortunately, this is one of the weakest moments for the Central Bank of Nigeria. That oil, oil price has dropped uh, as low as around $30 a barrel. And that doesn't uh, put the reserves in a good situation. Government is locking the economy down. Uh, like other governments around the world have locked down their economy. Mm. So it's not the same as business shutting down. So even those who have business and they want to do it, they can't do it. The airport is closed. You can't even travel. Supply chains are broken. You can't even import. You can't export. The, the, the reason for the lockdown is to prevent the spread of the pandemic. So it's in everybody's interest that we have the lockdown. So we are on vacation, if you like to put it that way. So business is not shutting down. Business is on vacation. It's not just business that is on vacation. Even leisure is on vacation. Churches, mosques, you know, eateries, name it, cinemas, football, stadium, and the rest of it. So it's a lockdown. So everyone is on break. Well, the bad news was that the oil price had collapsed ahead of the lockdown. The good news is that the lockdown, uh, one benefit of it is that it reduces the demand pressure. So this is the time that, you know, there is very little point in the bank taking action. I mean, bankers committee met on Friday. They want to give uh, so many trillions to pharma companies. Pharma companies are on lockdown. You know, so everybody is on lockdown. Soon, banks will not be able to go to their offices. Central bank will not be able to open their office. So everybody is on a lockdown. And that gives us a moment we are on like half time, if you like, during the match. So it gives us a moment to reflect and think. Ayo of Economic Associates, they're speaking um, on the proposed lockdown or not. Uh, we'll get to talk to that, talk to that a little later on the program. I still have Ivan Ufeli with me. Uh, we're still looking at the Serap call uh, for funds to be monitored. Um, what measures, proactive measures, do you think um, can be put in place to evaluate spending after we get through this pandemic, in, in your opinion? Of course, there, there, there will be some accounting measures, okay, that um, uh, officials or institutions directly involved in the disbursement of this fund must have, you know, um, proper what you call project management. And then we must see the effect and the return on investment, okay? Where these monies are sent to, what purposes they are sent for, and whether those purposes were really... Who should, uh, who should um, the EFCC and the ICPC, what kind of, I mean, how should they go about making sure they're able to track this thing? Remember the NCDC yeah, at yeah. some point said they bought goods um, and told the people they will send, give them the money later after the government released the funds. The money was, uh, were du uh, was duly uh, given to the uh, people that they bought um, equipment and goods from. So how do you track that? No, you can track that through auditing. Okay, they will audit their accounts, they will investigate the inflow of funds and then expenditure, okay, and then the debt, the proposed debt and all that, all that will be evaluated. That is the job of the EFCC, okay, and their accountants and auditors, okay, definitely that will be done. There's no doubt about that. So, but the bigger issue is that we must caution ourselves. I mean, those persons or those institutions involved must understand that this is not a party. Uh, this is not uh, 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 yeah, no, this is not a campaign, a uh, political <laughs> campaign where you do things, you know, and all that. We should know that we are fighting a cause. We are fighting a dangerous situation that if we don't do it adequately, a lot of people will people will die more. 
people will contact that disease, those virus more, okay? But if these funds are channeled to the appropriate use, and then we're able to contain the situation, tame the virus, eh, we will have a cause to rejoice, and we'll have a cause to look at our records and be proud of what we have done. Okay, let's look at the call um, asking, again, Sarah, this time, asking the president to um, ask the state governors to use monies from their security vote to help with the current situation uh, that we have at the moment. Uh, what do you make of that? And so far, have the governors impressed you with the measures that they are taking and allotting the people to um, as regards this situation. Well, just a few governors. I mean, the issue of uh, using the security funds for this purpose is key. I'm commending Sarah for that because it's a, it's a security situation. We think security is only when you have insurgents or you have uh, bandits. Uh, bandits or, you know, headsmen and all that. No. If you look at the constitution graphically, Security situations are classified. I mean, issues of uh, deadly diseases and pandemic are classified under security situations. So, I mean, it is a security uh, issue at hand, and we must look at it and address it as such. We, we, we must, you know, tell the governors to rethink, because there was a governor that was speaking over the weekend, and he said that uh, because uh, the pandemic cannot get into his own state because his have state is state. mentioned in the Bible. When you have things like that, when you have the reasoning of a governor like that in, in a country, you have a problem. We see what the Lagos State government is doing. We see what other governors okay, are trying to do okay, to contain this situation. I mean, we should call on them to shut down schools all over. Okay, because I, I think I, most states have done yeah, that. Let's, state, let's, let's look at the call um, also, uh, this time from NCDC, uh, to philanthropists uh, citing the example of Aliko Dangote Foundation yes. donating 200, 200 million yeah. naira to mm. uh, fighting this pandemic and asking that all the Nigerians do the same. Uh, do you see that? Do you see people actually buying into that idea and coming in? Because uh, the NC, uh, NCDC says they need one point. I think 1.5 or 1.6 billion uh, okay. naira to tackle this insurgency, and so far uh, they are, they are just short of that mark. Yes, I, I think that people who people who are large-hearted, you know, this thing is about people's prerogative. You can't force them really to do it, but we can appeal to people who have the funds. Okay, like Aliko Dango, they have set the ball rolling. The richest man in Africa. Uh, unfortunately, the richest woman in Africa is donating, she's donating prayers mm -hmm. as her own way of, uh, because she has not responded to this, uh, other than the call for prayers and all that. And then Nigerians who have the resources, who have the way with them, should we do that? Look, the, the international community, the owner of uh, uh, Alibaba, you know, donated a lot, even to the U.S., you know, a lot of funds and uh, materials against, to fight against this to um, different countries of the world. I think that people who have the means should be able to do it. This is an existential crisis. This disease is, uh, from those who have research on it, so it has a capacity and a tendency to do a lot of havoc, okay? And then if we know that and we have confirmed that to be true, then we must war against it to make sure that, uh, you know, humanity uh, is, you know, kept safe away from this uh, pandemic. Honestly, thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you. And we will say in absentia, thank you to Balaho Olojede, who tried to join us via telephone, but for bad uh, network connection. We'll have him again some other time. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we return, what is happening in Asso Rock as regards this pandemic? Stay with us.